Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome. Uh, it is six o'clock and you have joined the Wakefield Board of Health meeting. Uh, so we will call this meeting to order. Um, why don't we do a roll call to start? Uh, Candace Linehan is present. Orville president, uh, present. <laughs> Elaine Silva, present. Great. And we have health director Choi with us and Cindy Longo taking minutes and Sheree Dalton who is helping us with some logistical stuff. Uh, so why don't I just explain my intended agenda so that everybody kind of knows where we're going tonight. Um, we are going to start with a discussion of the mask mandate. Uh, and Director Choi is gonna share uh, kind of the meat and potatoes of this mandate we're proposing tonight. And then we're gonna uh, invite the public to comment if they want to. Anyone that would like to comment, if you could please put your name and your address in the chat. Um, we will call on you in the order you put your name in the chat. Um, once Director Choi has finished his uh, description of the mandate. We will just go down the list in the chat, but once he's finished, um, we will close the sign up for public participation. Um, each person will have a minute to share their comments and then I will share some comments and the board will share some, some comments and then we will um, we'll have a vote. Uh, so Director Choi, are you ready? Thank you. So today uh, I'm bringing before the Board of Health uh, an indoor mask mandate. And so this is uh, similar to the ones in the past. So essentially this indoor mask mandate is uh, for, or, for all public indoor spaces. And the reason we are, uh, the, the reason I am asking for uh, consideration of indoor mask mandate is because there are, you know, there are several, there are several metrics here uh, in Wakefield that we are looking, that we are pointing to, to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we know that the Omicron variant uh, that has been out for about two months now um, is much more contagious uh, than the previous variants. Uh, it currently accounts for somewhere between 50 to 59% of all US positive cases. Uh, currently, uh, Wakefield is seeing uh, close to 7% positivity rate in the last two weeks. And so, you know, as part of our, as part of our community, we want to make sure that we can provide a safe environment uh, for all Wakefield residents. And so the public indoor spaces uh, mask mandate is meant for all spaces in which members of the public are invited or otherwise allowed to enter a building or structure to interact with any persons in order to or transact any public or private business. And so this includes restaurants, bars, offices, social clubs, grocery stores, pharmacies, and other retail establishments. Um, this also includes indoor performance and event venues, hotels, gyms, fitness clubs. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list, but this is uh, including all public and private business. Uh, private business, excuse me. So as part of the order, um, any individual who is over the age of five, um, and this is based on CDC guidance uh, on safe mask wearing, any individual who is over the age of five, regardless of vaccination status, shall be required to cover their nose and mouth with a clean mask when in, or when in public, public indoor spaces, as well as private places open to the public. And so there are a list of conditions under which this is um, going to be uh, applied to. This is uh, important, you know, and I'll list some of them and there'll be a uh, more complete list in the actual order, but that's employees of public indoor spaces must wear masks at all times while on the premises of the business, unless alone in their personal workspace. Um, you know, customers at food service establishments may only remove masks when seated. Customers may remove masks when receiving dental care, other health care, or swimming. Um, customers at indoor dance floors must be masked. Customers at indoor performance venues may only remove masks for eating and drinking. Uh, houses of worship are included in this order. Uh, customers, workers, and visitors at fitness centers, health clubs are required to wear a mask at all times, even during the fitness activities, um, other than swimming. Uh, swimming is uh, exempted. Uh, residents and employees at multifamily buildings are required to wear masks in common areas and hallways. 
And so as part of this order, um, the enforcement is going to be uh, set forth for all public spaces. Um, this is for the board, any agent of the Board of Health can enforce. And so we will be working also with police on this as well. Uh, we will be using this to enforce this order and regulation. Currently, uh, we, are, we are proposing that uh, the fines be $50 for the first offense, $100 for the second offense, and $150 for the third and subsequent offense. The reason, um, just to give a little bit of context as to you know, the, the, the reason we're asking for a mask mandate, um, there is, um, the CDC actually advises um, the use of masks in, commu in the community to prevent transmission of COVID-19. Masks are primarily intended to um, both uh, mitigate the spread of exhaled virus, as well as those who are not infected from getting the virus. And so we wanna make sure that uh, folks understand that masks have proven to be useful in mitigating the spread. Uh, we will specify specifically that masks, not all masks are created equal. We are not asking for a cloth mask mandate. Uh, masks are um, generally, we have a tier of masks. So we have KN95s and N95s are the gold standard. Um, surgical three ply masks when in combination used with cloth masks um, are also very effective in preventing spread. And so this is just uh, good information for folks to understand that um, safe and effective mask wearing should also uh, be uh, you know, sealed against the face and preventing, uh, preventing gaps from forming. And so we have uh, multiple studies uh, that go over the effectiveness of masking from preventing COVID-19 spread in different, in different settings. And so hopefully um, this will summarize it well. Uh, we have found that masks help in preventing symptomatic, uh, symptomatic individuals from spreading. We also, have, um, we also have evidence that in congregate living settings, as well as close working environments, face coverings, uh, masks are, are associated with a 70% reduced risk of infection. And so we have multiple lines of evidence to suggest that mask wearing is an effective way of preventing COVID. And um, to wrap up, essentially, the mask mandate um, is not it's not meant to be um, a long-term solution. This is not going to be forever. The mask mandate has a, review, a tentative review date, um, which will be on March 16th, um, 2022 at 7 p.m. At, at the Board of Health meeting. We will then reevaluate the evidence um, to see if a mask mandate is still, um, is still effective and whether or not we will extend it or not. Mask wearing is, uh, by all means, just one tool in the toolbox um, in preventing COVID spread. There are lots of other safety measures that we can use. Uh, getting vaccinated is still one of the best tools for us. Social distancing, testing, and proper hand washing hygiene are all tools in this toolbox that we can use to stop COVID spread. Thank you. Thank you, Director Tree. Um, I see that we possibly don't have a chat on this Zoom. Is that true? That's yeah, right. that's, yes, that's what okay, I was wondering. Cool. Yeah. Um, but I, I do see some hands up. Great pivoting Wakefield residents. Um, and uh, I see right now uh, five hands up. Um, and so um, it looks like we have five for public participation. So we're going to stop the list at these five uh, individuals. Uh, all right, six for. For Ms. De La Volpe. Um, we'll stop it at six. Um, and uh, Ms. Brummery, I believe you were the first to put your hand up. So why don't you go first? And um, Sherry will time you for a minute. Perfect. Thank you um, so much for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I just would like to put in my two cents worth um, for the Wakefield mask mandate. And I believe that masks should be optional and not a mandate. Um, the reasons I feel this way is I feel that it would be unfair to retailers and small businesses to have to enforce a mandate um, put out by the town. They have struggled enough throughout this pandemic. And I think that could possibly lose business for some retailers in town. Um, there's also no definitive studies or data to my knowledge 
showing that masks are beneficial. And I say that definitive because we could argue back and forth. There's lots of information back and forth. Um, unless it is an N95 mask, my understanding is that the they are ineffective. And I know that Mr. Uh, Chewy, I think you just said that there will be a not a cloth mask mandate, which I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, I also feel that children should not Sorry, be in masks. That's been a minute. Thank you. Why don't we move on to Ms. Lordy? Hi, thank you so much. Um, I'd like to echo Allison's opinion. Um, recommend masks, please don't mandate them. Most people have shown they'll wear them anyway without the need for a formal mandate. When mask mandates were introduced nearly two years ago, they were our only line of defense. Now we have vaccines with very high adoption rates. 85% of Wakefield residents five and over have received at least one dose and we're told vaccines work. And if that's our way out of this and if that's the case, it doesn't get to be both. That's precisely why our governor chose to recommend but not mandate masks across the state and we should take his lead. I would like to share a personal story about why I am strongly opposed to a mask mandate. I've heard time and time again that it's not a big deal, just do it, it doesn't hurt you and it protects those around you. Well, for me, it's a very big deal and it does hurt me. I have a medical condition that prevents me from wearing a mask for any extended period of time. As a result, I didn't enter an indoor public space for an entire year. I suffered all the while protecting the community. I'm sorry, this is really important to me. Mandates are harmful because they are all or nothing. If you have a legitimate reason not to wear a mask, there is no space for the in-between with the mandate. I'm not making this personal to make it about me. I'm making it personal to show there's another side of the coin and there's a mental health crisis that also needs to be considered here. We have more lines of defense today than we did when mask mandates were originally imposed. And if we're to trust in those other defenses, then this mandate is not okay. Encourage mask use, but please don't mandate it. Leave space for people like me, leave space for the in-between and for individual choice. Recommend it, but please don't mandate it. Madam Chair, that's been a minute. Thank you, Ms. Lodi. Um, Ms. McCauley, I believe you are next. Hi, um, I would like to say that I completely agree with Allison and Samantha. I don't think that it is uh, beneficial to Wakefield to have a mask mandate. I think it should be optional. We, in 2020, when restaurants reopened, we made it a point to go to restaurants every weekend, sometimes twice a weekend, to support businesses because we knew how they were suffering. And I was someone who worked in restaurants. I left my career in Boston to work in restaurants when my children were babies so that I could raise them myself. And I wanted to give back and I wanted to support restaurants. So every weekend of 2020, we ate in restaurants. We never contracted COVID. I, we did recently contract COVID in December of this year. My husband and I, I spoke to Debbie at Board of Health. She's completely aware of our situation and I followed all the protocols she suggested. But the irony of that is that I had taken a couple of weeks off Adam, yeah, that's been a minute. to do projects and had not been outside the house that entire time. So Thank it's- you, I appreciate your thoughts. Mr. Sprague, you'll be next. Thank you, Madam Chair. Cloth masks are not um, something that provide protection against an airborne black virus. That's from Scott Gottlieb. Scientific research has proven that COVID-19 virus particles are under a micron in size, which is smaller than a mask's ability can filter it. The warning on this box of masks right here clearly states they do not eliminate the risk of illness or infection. Uh, these facts render masks and mask mandates unnecessary. Therefore, mask wearing is not a public health issue, it's a personal choice issue. My concern for our community is that if a mandate is enacted, there will be inevitable acts of civil disobedience. The probable outcome of that will be confrontation. We have enough social media to know how those play out. Civil disobedience occurs when there's an unjust law or a mandate. And when justice is enacted, people comply without a second thought. But when there is an unjust act, you can be assured there'll be opposition. Dr. King said, uh, how, when, when he was asked, how can you advocate breaking some laws and not breaking others, or a mandate in this case? His reply was, there are two types of laws, just and unjust. Madam I would be the first to advocate to obey just laws. One has not a legal offer, but a moral 
responsibility to obey just laws. Conversely, I appreciate your comments. Thank you, sir. Responsibility to disobey unjust laws. Thank you very much. Um, we'll move to Miss um, Markowitz. Makarowitz, excuse me. Um, Ma'am, I'm sorry, you are on mute. Uh, can we hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right. I just want to say I don't envy the position you guys are in. And no matter what, you're going to get backlash. And I just want to know you guys to know, thank you for what you're doing and trying. Um, I have to disagree with the mandate, though, and I echo everything that everybody um, before me just said. And my biggest reason is my son. My three-year-old son was born with so many different health complications, one being compromised lungs. He is forced to wear a mask at the Doyle in order to receive services that he has the right to receive. And that puts him directly at risk. I would then have to weigh the, the risk and reward of if that is what's important to me, then my son doesn't get to go out into our community because he needs that recovery time. His lungs need to be able to breathe. We all contracted quarantine, uh, COVID here in October. Me, my three sons, and my mother, we, were, we didn't have one sniffle. We have followed every rule, everything. Madam Chair, that's been a minute. Thank you for your time. Don't make it mandatory. Appreciate your thoughts. Ms. De La Volpe? Hi, yes, uh, thank you. Um, I, I guess I'm going to be the dissenting voice here. Uh, businesses have um, been trying to uh, require masks. And I think that if the Board of Health mandated masks, that th this would take the burden off the businesses of trying to, to do it themselves. Uh, um, and I would like to say there is definitive evidence that masks do work. And I, I think it's ludicrous for any of us um, to think that we know more than, than the public health uh, uh, professionals do. Uh, max, vaccinated people can still spread the virus. We, we know that. Um, so therefore, a mask mandate, um, I, th I think, is going to cover everything. It's clear. Wakefield public has not done 100% on this. And that's why I advocate for a, a mask mandate. I don't go into very many public places, but when I do, I'm appalled at the number of people who are not wearing masks. This is an affront to me and anyone else um, who, who wants to keep um, everyone safe. I, I wear a mask to protect myself, but I also wear a mask primarily to protect everyone else. And I yeah, think that's what we in a society need to do. Please do the mask mandate. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Delavope. Um it seems like we do have two more. I think we have enough time to hear from these last two uh, public commenters. Mr. Lieber, why don't you go ahead? I appreciate the ability to comment. I ha have a view that a mask mandate, as long as it is done thoughtfully, will be beneficial to the town and the people. This is a public health issue that can absolutely be done with the appropriate amount of nuance so it does not require just a binary masks are everywhere for everyone under all conditions. It can be that there are exceptions that are written in, which is consistent with how public schools and DESE is handling things to some degree. And by the same token, setting the absolute expectation that masks will be the vast great majority, well, realistically somewhere in the 90 percentile of the usage and people will potentially have to provide a justification as to why they don't have it beyond that they do not wish to have it. So I, full, I fully support having a mask mandate that has nuance, has the expectation for an end. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hickey? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so I believe that when science and politics collide, politics wins every time. And I'm actually working construction right now and I would welcome anyone to wear any of your masks of choice and come send some drywall. You'll be hacking up powder for about three days. So I don't believe they work. Um, perhaps if you wore something so restrictive that you couldn't really function 
that could work. But you know, other, other than a full snap-on respirator from working construction, I can tell you they're pointless. So therefore, I'm against the mandate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hickey. All right. Thank you for all of those comments. Um, we'll close the public comment part of our meeting right now. And I would just like to mention that the Board of Health has received some public comment via email. And we have read those in their entirety, and they will be included in the public record of this uh, meeting, should anybody wish to read those. Um, so I would like to share uh, some of my thoughts on this, and then I'll invite my fellow board members uh, and um, to share theirs. And, you know, I, I think we know that community mask wearing reduces transmission of the coronavirus and we know that that works in two ways, by preventing infected people from exposing others and protecting the uninfected from the virus. Um, and we know that transmission occurs before symptom onset. Uh, so, you know, many people that feel well may feel like, like they're healthy and safe, but unfortunately they, they do have COVID-19. Um, and now that so many of our residents, as was mentioned in public, um, have received the vaccine, the symptoms could be even more mild. We know this particular variant, Omicron, is more transmissible than the previous variants. Um, and we also know that masks work best when everyone wears them, uh, everyone that is able to wear them. And I agree that some of our friends and neighbors are not able to wear them. And I, I believe that this mandate allows for that. Um, and perhaps Anthony could speak a little more. Uh, Good, um, I just want to, you know, right. So I want to clarify as part of it. So um, there, it is over the age of five, uh, five or older is the mask mandate. And then there is a medical exemption for those who cannot wear them due to medical condition or disability. Uh, and a mask mandate also, I, I believe, can um, can make it easier for smaller businesses, for, for anybody to navigate this difficult time we're in. When masks are for everybody, then there's no question. Um, I think that there's no perfect solution to this. And uh, we know that unfortunately, fully vaccinated people do still get coronavirus and we still need to keep working towards a solution. And I think that a, a mask mandate is that solution. And I agree that it, it shouldn't be permanent. And we do have a plan review date uh, to consider where we've come since this uh, has been put in place. And so I, I think, you know, it, it's a low harm intervention that can have potentially large positive impacts on our community. Um, yeah, uh, Anthony, any other thoughts? Um, I think I just want to echo, I know that there are a lot of folks that, you know, may not see masks as the one size fits all, you know, kind of solution to this problem. And like I was trying to, I think I, I tried to say in the beginning, but I just want to echo again, it is, again, one of the tools in the toolbox and it's not, it's not a permanent solution. Right? We're not asking for an infinite mask mandate with no end date. What we're looking for is the mask wearing to coincide with us being able to provide more vaccinations in the community, more boosters, and more testing in the meantime. That's what the goal is. The goal is to protect the community with multiple means, and this just being one of them. Lane or Laurel, do you guys want to share your thoughts? I guess I'll go. I don't. Yeah, go I can't find myself <laughs> anywhere. But um, I'd like to thank the people that um, came for the public comment tonight. Um, I think you shed a lot of light on uh, um, some different views that I know myself. Um, my background: I've been in public health for twenty something years, um, and I've seen vaccines. I've seen um, pandemics. Um, this is my, actually, I think it's my third in my career. <laughs> I hate to say it, but 
I, I understand where people are coming from and if we do make it optional, but I think we have seen the difference that masks can assist us. It's not the solution. It's not the one that's gonna make everything go away. We also have vaccines. And I think that it is something that, I think I like that the fact that there is some data and some, some things that we do know that it does slow down the spread and assist us with that. And I think the fact that we're only looking for a little bit, I think into March, which is only 60 something days. And hopefully we will see more vaccinated people. There'll be more clinics. And maybe we will see with the mask in place, see a little bit of a decrease here in our numbers. And also I know that it is predicted that our surge is coming and the surge would be um, in the end of the middle of, to the end of January. So by putting this in, I think, I think it will aid us. I think it, it assists us. The masks are um, something that we know. It's not the, the solution. We really don't know. But I think with the mask and with the vaccines, I, I think this will help. And I do like, um, I do like our mandate, how it's, it's there. There are some good exceptions for people you know, it's over the age of five. There are for people for medical reasons who don't have to wear a mask, cannot wear one. And I think the fact that we have a good review date coming up. Laurel. Oh, uh, I echo again. Thank you all for participating. I know, please, we're exhausted ourselves. I've been working on a time frame from when this first hit. Elaine and I um, and Candace have all been on the board for the whole time. Um, Elaine and I started when the town was facing H1N1 and that turned out to be a pandemic that we were able to manage. This one is sticky. Um, you know, despite best hopes, biology is an amazing thing and variants are dicey. So I like the idea of, you know, always presenting that we're trying to be nuanced we still have to hash out um, as this meeting goes forward, some of our wording. I, I have some suggestions for changing. Um, I do sympathize, even though we have carved out exceptions and we are supposed to absolutely honor anybody and stop questioning them. All they have to say is I just can't, but um, we can't control the public response to that. But I am still searching for a solution. So please know that we are, empathetic to those issues. Um, I, this has been quite um, an interesting time frame. We've all been under kind of a perfect storm in that we, you know, our health department has done as much as we can in regards to prevention, mitigation, and follow-up. So I don't know what the grand total of vaccines that we have given just as a town um, with our health department and collaborating volunteers who I wanna publicly thank again, but that was our, our biggest bang for our buck was being able to manage that. Um, that being said, we have holes and we talk about mitigation and prevention in, in, in health, right? In public health. So as much as I am tired of wearing my mask, it only works when the health department kind of, you know, that there's some peer pressure out there on mass. And if we don't say, no, it's, it's this scary, we have to do it, then we have a lot of second guessing um, around. The CDC has just changed out because Omicron seems to be spinning so quickly. So you get infection and you seem to be clearing it, especially, um, you know, if your immune system is in good shape. So we have reduced and this is a big part for me and, and really coming down on the side of, of being more cautious and mandating. We have reduced our um, time and isolation in half. We are letting people come out at day five and they have to continue to mask. So that means, you know, and, and we have good evidence though, I absolutely acknowledge that, that the, the messaging in this has been not perfect, you know, we're not in a perfect world. This is a fast moving place, goes through lots of committees, but just to drill down, 
once someone has a positive test, we used to ask them to isolate for 10 days. We also base that on symptoms. Now we have varying symptom profile looking at us, so we're doing the best we can. We've dropped that to five days and asked that those people continue masking even in their own house for another five days. So to me, that means that there's room for error if people either not understanding where they are in their own um, disease timeline or just, you know, just missing the mark. And we expect, you know, this is human behavior. We expect people to make lots of mistakes in this, but we're putting the high bar, the, the mandate is the high bar. That's a nuance in this. This is our goal. We know there'll be holes. And one of the things that I will suggest to the board, um, which is what we did for, for our school things is I, I'm not a big fan of trying to, trying to finagle fines on this. And I need to discuss this further with, with the board. Um, in our original order, not our original order, our most recent municipal order. And remember the municipal mask indoor mask mandate stands, the school mask mandate stands. This has nothing to do with either one of those things. This is in addition that we need to, we need to cover the whole rest of the town with this blanket per se. But um, rather than getting punitive with fines, um, we would ask, you know, of course, we're asking um, people who are, who are head of establishments to make sure things are posted and that they themselves are wearing masks. But if they have someone who is unruly about it, that it becomes a trespass issue, not a fines issue. That seems to be working. Um, we've been doing that since September 2nd with the indoor municipality um, man mandate. So that's your library, town hall, all schools. And I hope that it could work um, in this case for the public as well. I would, I um, am ready to listen to my, my two um, colleagues to see where they think, but that would be my recommendation is that the enforcement is much more on prevention and education rather than um, whipping out a fine book. I mean, we are working really hard at the health department. Please know. We still have our hand in um, drug prevention, mitigation, treatment, not to mention inspectional services, which is what we've always done. Our school nurses, as, as many of you know, are out straight. Everybody is doing the best we can. We are not yet at the finish line with this thing. And we can't tell you when we will be because this is biology and it is thwarting our efforts. We've made really good, um, We've made, and, and, you know, it's incredible to think that we were able to get a vaccination effort done so well, so quickly, but our hospital numbers tell us that we have far, far more effort to go. And in that case, I would encourage a mandate at this time. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think I hear your concern about the, the fines. Um, I, I know we don't want to be punitive. Um, and, you know, I, ideally we wouldn't want to put business owners in the position where they have to enforce this. And I wouldn't um, expect any business owner to feel unsafe about someone that was refusing to mask. Um, but then I, I also wonder, you know, when enforcing a mandate, do we need to have consequences if it's not followed? You know, um, I know other towns have had fines. That doesn't mean that's what we have to do, but I know that's one way that they have chosen to, to proceed. Anthony, have we heard from police of any trespass skirmishes or conflicts in this regard? I mean, I know municipal buildings hold more something than, you know, extending this to private businesses, but I haven't heard any feedback. Not to my knowledge. 
Um, there has not there has not been an issue so far. Yeah, I we would we would heard of it, but we haven't heard anything since. I think also Laurel and Candace and Anthony. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you know, last time when we had mandates, we didn't do fines, and we never. I don't think there was anyone that ever was a problem with trespassing. Um, Laurel, I know we talked about this a long time. And one thing I've noticed in communicating with a lot of other um, public health departments, and I visited a couple of cities and towns that put in mask mandate. And I went to one last night and no one seemed to mind that they had to put a mask on to go in. I, I had to stop and think I had one with me. And I had to try to remember if this town had a mask mandate or not. And they very nicely had it. And I watched about maybe 15, 20 people in two different establishments. And they just put their mask on and they just went about it. Um, but I, I kind of agree with Laurel. I don't think putting, um, putting a, a, a money thing onto it, putting a fine onto it, and to enforce that is very, very difficult. Um, we're going to be pulling, have to be pulling services. You can't be everywhere all the time. You just can't be. And so you're going to be pulling in, um, you know, your food inspectors, technically your health department. You're going to be putting business owners in, um, you know, positions that they don't want. And maybe that's one way that um, it might help to ease ease this in um, people knowing that, you know, they can, they have to do it. It's mandated. I know they're not going to get a fine, but maybe it will help them to understand and, and think more about it to me. I, I know it's there and I see the sign on the business and I go, Oh, okay. I'll just put it on and, and I'll just go in and that's it. And I'll be out. I don't know. That's about, I, I, I totally agree with Laurel. I, I do not like the fact of putting um, a fines with a, with a money thing attached to it. I really do. It's more education. That's what we say. The more we educate the public, the more they understand. And it's easier for them. It's not easy. I know what it's like being on the other side too. Yeah. And, and just, you know, I'm going over notes um, from these past two years. And this is independent of what happened in the emergency order of 2021 when um, that also included minimizing numbers um, inside restaurants and spacing. So some people are still sticking with that. Most six foot space things have kind of been whittled away. We know that people move. Um, and I believe that we got into some sticky issues because capacity numbers are very hard, you know, are very easy to, to take a snapshot of and go up. Oh, you're above capacity, period. The spacing is different, period. Um, we had some uh, coexisting complaints that also came from the alcohol board. So it was you know, a matter of much more, um, more significant in regards to what health department inspectional services generally approach. I think um, the thought of trying to write a, a ticket to some, you know, I, I would just, you know, again, speaking to the person who talked about, you know, sort of social discourse, um, I agree that, you know, we want to be polite. We want to be, we're in this together. We're into this together again. Believe me, we know. We absolutely know that we're still in this. I know that we all have different opinions. Um, our board, we're all um, medical professionals. We, uh, not, you know, we get daily input. We're looking at the numbers and I've said this before. I do not think this is a big ask compared to all the mitigation and the risk versus benefits consequences. I know that there are people who are, you know, have written us and who have, um, would argue my point, but I have been in the research now for three years and I am still convinced that masking is a mitigation strategy that we need to continue to use. So are we thinking that maybe we would like to consider removing that piece, uh, the fine piece from this mandate? 
Yes, may I make may I make a suggestion? Please. Um, so in the after section four enforcement, second paragraph, so section four enforcement, I'll just read it. The person or entity in control of a public indoor space shall have the obligation to enforce the requirements of the mass mandate set forth in this order. All entry doors of businesses open to the public must post signage stating that face masks must be worn inside the establishment except for a medical exemption. Um, and then the next paragraph talks about um, this order and regulation is enforceable against the person or entity in control of the public indoor space by, and this is where I would scratch a fine um, and move it to the language that we used for the municipal buildings. Um, Oh, I should have written this out and sent it to you. Hold on, hold on. Um, it would be, I'm almost there, hold on. Uh, violators shall be required to the lead. Um, I think I need to figure, figure this English out a little bit better, but violators rather than fines shall be required to leave the building immediately on penalty of trespass. So as we were told by town councilor Mullen in past, you know, when we were hashing this out, that you know, it's just simply you have to wear the mask or you have to leave. Um, do you want a mask? Here's a mask, or you have to self-identify. And I know that this is not easy, but we are not asking people to prove that they can't wear a mask. I think we need to work on a compassion campaign in in, in town that says if someone says I can't wear a mask, that's the end of it. Um, but we can only do the best. I know that this is not the ultimate fix, but that would be my, my suggestion. Anthony, have you worked in the language as I've been saying it? I feel like I need to. Yes, um, I mean, the, the language that you used right there covered, um, covered the, you know, the essence of what we're looking for um, to, you know, not to levy a fine, but to, um, have the uh, have the individual who is unable who, who will not mask um, to be asked to leave the building. Um, we will also right. be providing we'll also be providing providing a mask um, for that individual. All right, let me slow it down. So just bear with me. I just want to get this right because our hope is to is to then then vote on this. Um, Correct. Okay. So I'm taking that out, I'm taking that out. Okay, well, enforceable against the person in control of public indoor space. I think I'm just gonna suggest we ax that whole paragraph. Um, Okay, here we go. This is not that hard. So just rather than me trying to jerry rig that second paragraph under section four enforcement, um, I would say effective January 9th, 2022, and until further order of the board, all persons over the age of five are required to wear a mask. And we're saying mask, we're getting rid of, um, that covers the mouth and knows at all times while indoors in any building. We could just write indoors. Um, the order applies to all persons without regard to an individual's COVID-19 vaccination status, comma, but shall not apply to persons who have a disability that prevents them from wearing a face mask or covering or who, or who depend on supplemental oxygen to breathe nor to any employee occupying a private office by himself. Violators shall be required to leave the building immediately upon, uh, immediately on penalty of trespass. That's the language we used in September. So far that we've had no problem with that. Am I not correct? We've had no problem with that. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Yeah, 
very reasonable, I think. I have one one question to clarify, Anthony. Um, in regards to it says customers at food service establishments may only remove mask when seated. So that means they would have a mask on when they entered the restaurant or takeout. If they were coming into a restaurant, they would leave their mask on until they were seated at their table. Am I not correct? But they would be able to remove their mask even if they were not eating or drinking. Am I correct? Hmm. So I think that's a I think that's a good detail to have. There is there is specification that customers at indoor performance venues may only remove masks for eating and drinking. So we should we should make you know, we should make this consistent whether or not uh, we are allowing for uh, customers to have their mask on if they're not, not actively eating. I just saw that recently um, at a, a restaurant in a town that had a mandate and it did specify on the door that you were to have your mask until you were seated. Then you were able to take your mask off because they seated you. Most rest businesses are, are great, you know, at, at spacing and everything. And then the only time you would reapply your mask was when you got up from the table to enter a public space, such as going to a, a restroom or to exit. And that's why I just questioned, you know, some clarification on that because I've seen it in another um, town. So we should specify specifically only they would reapply the mask only if they're entering another common area. So that's a restroom or between tables. I think it covers it, Elaine. It talks about only remove mask once seated. Yeah, but people would say seated, but then you look at, you know, like he says, indoor performances and, and just when you're seated. So does that mean when okay. you're eating or? Um... I, think, I, think I, I think I understand what Elaine's getting at. So yeah, I hear you. If it's shown to a table, in some ways, if you're looking at the word seated, you've been seated, but in the physical form of seating, uh, sitting, I guess. So if you've gotten up to go to the restroom, it's no longer seated. It's what you're, it's what you're getting at. And the same, um, we would just need to really work with establishments on that. You know, say, I don't want people to, I mean, I would love to see people put, um, you know, those at, at bars. So we have some, we have some, this may have an impact on this open bar stuff, which in fact it should, because I would say that this is what is driving our numbers is this, you know, we have a couple of institutions in, in town um, where there's a lot of kind of open standing and drinking. And I think this may impact as it should, um, kind of this standing around and bar capacity mm -hmm. uh but we're saying when seated and then when you think if you sit at a bar how far are they spacing i i, I can't say that whereas if you look at a lot of establishments have placed um on their tables and boots and have put you know shields up or you know move tables way over here so they've done a lot of social distancing and kept it that way and it's done well but we're just saying only remove your mask when seated. So if you went into a bar area, are uh, the bars still seating them every two seats apart or three seats apart? I mean, that's that's where I think uh, that we need a little bit more clarification there. So it's my understanding that, that the distancing went away when everything else went away last spring. Um, and my observation in the places that I've gone to have been kind of, you know, again, uh, uh, open to, to uh, interpretation by owners. And I think that this is a carve out that I don't know if it should be included in this, the, the wearing the mask needs to be included in this regulation. We really need for the next two months to back away from this cohort open standing bar stuff. You know, if we think that masking is working, um, we, need, we, need to, we need to look at that piece. Um, 
So no regulation is perfect, but we're going to be perfect. We're not going to have a, I know very I, hard. I, it's very I, difficult to put the words and, and be perfect to cover every possible scenario out there to help and assist these businesses and everything. Cause they're going to be the ones that are going to be um, questioned and have to enforce this and be able to understand and relay the regulations to them the best. Right. So what do you think, Elaine? <laughs> uh, mm. Well, I, 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 I just feel it says when seated. So when seated at a bar, um, I haven't, I only saw one establishment. I, I haven't really been out much. I hate to say this to the public, but um, I haven't been. Um, and they were, they were social distance. They were spread apart at this particular bar, but we were sitting at boots and they had put their, um, I've seen a couple of local establishments, you know, they put the clear plastic right, up. Right, so, right. I mean, that's, yeah. So when you're seated, when you go from the door to the seat there, whether you're eating or not, and you sit there to me, you could remove your mask safely. You're with the people or you, you know, yep. you're with your group or something. Yep. But when we say to remove your mask when seated, a, a food service establishment, a bar, is that considered, Anthony, under the, under the uh, food? I can't remember the regulation because you are serving food and you are serving alcoholic beverages, but you're sitting at a bar. So once seated there, there's no more, as she says, no more social distancing or the separating. You know, that is gone with the um, mandated. Right. So I, I think the seated most likely at a bar is the same as seated at a booth is what, is what I'm getting at here. So I don't think there should be as much of a distinction there. Okay. So, so you know, as we have done in prior orders, um, we will be sending inspectional services around to restaurants um, to clarify. And again, not, not with a spirit of punitive behavior, but with a spirit of education and keeping things open in the long run. That is the spirit that Wakefield Health, Health Department works under. And our inspectors have been brilliant at it. So, um, Please know we will take good care with this. Okay. I'm ready to make a motion. You want me to make it? Yeah, okay. Anything else? Anthony, uh, do you have anything else? Elaine, do you have anything else? No, everything else is good. I just, that, that was one thing I just needed a little bit of clarification. That was a good point to clarify. Um, yeah, I take a motion. Okay, so I make a motion that Wakefield Board of Health endorses the indoor mask mandate with the change um, as noted in section four an enforcement um, to read as uh, effective, what did we say? January 9th, 2022. And until further order of the board, all persons over the age of five years are required to wear a mask that covers their mouth and nose at all times while indoors. This order applies to all persons without regard to an individual COVID, individual's COVID-19 vaccination status, but shall not apply to persons who have a disability that prevents them from wearing a face mask or covering or who depend on supplemental oxygen to breathe, nor to any employee occupying a private office by himself or herself. Violators shall be required to leave the building immediately on penalty of trespass. This order will be reviewed by the Board of Health at its regular meeting currently scheduled for Wednesday, March 16th, 2022 at 7 p.m. And each one thereafter is still in effect. If no action is taken by the Board of Health to rescind this order as written, um, this order as written shall remain in effect. The end. So we were actually putting it into effect for probably 60 something days. Am I not correct? We're just looking at a 60 day window. Am I correct? Yeah. Looks like it. Okay. You made your motion. 
I made my motion. That That's your it. motion. Okay. I'll um I'll second the motion. Uh, all in favor? Gorville, aye. Silver, aye. Linehan, aye. All right. So moved. Excellent. Um. Okay. Um. So I think that's that's it. That's what we came to do tonight. Um, thank you again for all the public comment. Um, it was was really helpful and excellent to hear um, so many opinions expressed so respectfully and carefully. I appreciate that. Um, and we will meet next week as scheduled. Um, I believe it's seven next Wednesday. I have it for the 19th. Candace. Excuse me. Yes, you're correct. Seven o'clock on the 19th. You are correct. Okay. And then again, March 6th, February, uh, then February 16th, then March 16th. Yep. Okay. Thank you again, everybody. Hang in there. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry, too. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, thank, thank you, Lynn. Anthony. And, um, thank everyone in the public and very Cindy. much for coming. Thank you, Cindy, too. Cindy. Oh, and Jen. Thank you, Jen. Oh, Jen. I see you. Yep. Oh, Wait, Jen could has, I, Jen has could I just ask you, issue. you can yeah. conclude your meeting. I just had a couple of questions as I um, imagine I have some homework to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. So our meeting is adjourned, Jen. Right? Yep. Jen. The meeting is adjourned. Yep. Uh, okay. At 6.56 6 p.m. on January 5th, 2022, we will adjourn the meeting of the Wakefield Board of Health. Thank you. Um, I was just contacted by the um, Chamber of Commerce to be able to provide some information for their members. So I just had a couple of questions that came to my mind, if you wouldn't mind, or maybe it's in the order once I have a chance to read it. Um, but things like um, facials, makeup application, beard and mustache trimming were the things that came to mind. Are those uh, um, no longer acceptable? That's so actually in the order that anybody getting a facial treatment can remove their mask for that particular order. facial treatment and then put it back on. Excellent. So and I think um, that's Barbara Shaw. Like, um, facials, also like any kind of cosmetic, any sort of like facial treatment, which I believe includes beard. Correct, Anthony? Okay. Excellent. And my only other question of clarity as I kind of put some materials together is um, I'm interpreting your conversation is that it is not okay to stand at a bar and drink. Without a mask. Well, you can't drink with a mask. <laughs> well, I mean, I think. You know, we, let's they look have to keep a mask on while they're standing there, but they would be able to lift a mask to take a drink. Okay. If they can manage both, I don't know. Right, but once they're seated, they'll be able to remove a mask. But I believe while standing, mask goes on and off. Great, thank you. Okay, I will, um, Anthony, I'll send all this stuff by you and you can um, edit and revise as you see fit. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Okay, good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night.